Hello, Mr. Schneider here. We're going to talk about volume of a prism today. Remember, a uh, prism is a three-dimensional object with polygons at the bases. And it should have two bases that are parallel and connected by rectangles. To find the volume of a prism, we multiply the area of the base of the prism by the height of the prism. When we read this formula, we say volume equals area of the base times height. Over here on the left, we have a rectangular prism. All the units are the same, so we don't have to convert anything. Uh, and our volume formula, I need the pen. The volume formula is volume equals area of the base times height. Now, since our base is a rectangle, we're going to do length times width. So we're going to substitute in length times width for the area of the base. We're going to keep the volume. We're going to keep the height. So volume is going to be equal to length, which is 2, times width, which is 5, times height, which is 6. So when I multiply that out, 2 times 5 is 10, times 6 is 60. And when we measure volume, we measure volume in a cubic unit. So we're going to say that this is inches cubed. Over on the right, we have a triangular prism. The volume of every prism is found by multiplying the area of the base times the height. Notice the capital B for area of the base. This, we have a triangle on the base. So since we have a triangle on the base, we call this a triangular prism. And the area formula that we'd use would be base times height divided by 2. I still have to multiply that by the height of the prism. And since these two heights are different, we subscript them. The height of the triangle, I'm going to call h sub 1. And the height of the prism, I'm going to call h sub 2. Remember, base and height have to be perpendicular. So when I substitute in, I'm going to say volume equals, and I'm going to do the base and height of the triangle. So base and height of the triangle would be 4 and 3. 4 times 3 divided by 2. Times the height of the prism, which is the distance between the bases. So the distance between the bases is 7. 4 times 3 is 12, divided by 2 is 6, times 7 is 42. And then it's always a cubic unit, so we're going to put meters cubed. Over here in part C, I'm going to be finding the volume of a trapezoidal prism. We call it a trapezoidal prism because the bases are trapezoids. As with any prism, volume is equal to area of the base times height. So because we have a trapezoid at the base, we have to put the area formula for a trapezoid in, which is height times base 1 plus base 2 divided by 2. Then I'm going to multiply that by the height of the prism. Now again, these two heights are different. This is the height of the trapezoid. This is the height of the prism. So I call this h1 and h2. My height of the prism is the distance between the... Or the height of the trapezoid is the distance between the bases and the trapezoid, so that's 4. The bases are the parallel sides in the trapezoid, so those are 2 and 6. I still have this divided by 2, and I have to multiply by the height of the prism, which is the distance between the trapezoids, which is 5. So for me, I'm going to do 2 plus 6, which is 8. Divide that by 2 and get 4. 4 times 4 is 16, times 5 is 80. My unit is always cubed, so here it will be millimeters cubed. Over on the right, this is a very special prism. It's called a parallel pipette. Uh, that's useful Jeopardy trivia, not super useful anywhere else. It's called a parallel pipette because it's a prism with parallelograms at the base. As with any prism, volume equals area of the base times height. So volume equals, since our base is a parallelogram, we use the formula base times height. And then I still have the height of the prism. Again, with the two different h's, I call one of them h sub 1, the other one h sub 2. Now with this parallelogram, my base and height have to be perpendicular. So I'm going to go with 8 for my base and 4 for my height. 8 times 4 times the height of the prism, which is 12. So when I do 8 times 4, that's 32. 32 times 10 is 320, but then I have another 2 of them, right? So 2 32s is 64. 64 plus 320 is 384. And my unit with that is yards cubed. 
Please remember with any of these calculations, you are more than welcome to use a calculator to do them. You do not have to do them in your head. Find the volume of a prism with a height of 70 centimeters and a hexagonal base with an area of 22 meters squared. If you notice, this is the first time that we ran into a problem with different units. Now we want to make our units match. So for me, it's much easier to leave something in a square unit alone and change something in a singular, singular unit. So I'm going to change the centimeters to meters by moving the decimal two places to the left. So this is going to be rewritten as 0.7 meters. The volume of every single prism is found by multiplying the area of the base times the height. Well, they gave me the area of the base. They said the area of the base was 22 meters squared. So I'm going to write 22 in for the area of the base. I'm going to put 0.7 in for the height. 22 times 0.7. Well, I can just do 22 times 7. So that's 154. But then I have to move my decimal over one place to the left. And my unit with this is always cubed with a volume, so it'll be meters cubed. Find the volume of a rectangular prism with a height of 0.75 feet and a base with dimensions of 4 inches by 6 inches. So I have two quantities measured in inches and one in feet. So for me personally, I'd much rather change this. So to change my 0.75 feet to inches, I'm going to multiply by 12. And 0.75 times 12 is going to be 9 inches. The volume of a prism can always be found by multiplying the area of the base times the height. In this case, we have a rectangular prism. So the area of the base can be found by multiplying length by width or base times height, whichever you prefer. But when I write length times width, I don't have to subscript. So volumes equal length times width times height. So volumes equal to 4 times 7 times my height, which is 9. 4 times 7 is 28 times 10 would be 280. So all I need to do is to take away one of those 28s. So that would leave me 252 inches cubed. A uh, fish tank is shaped as a rectangular prism. The dimensions of the base of the tank are 35 centimeters by 65 centimeters. If the volume of the tank is 91,000 cubic centimeters, find the height of the tank. So volume is equal to area of the base times height with every prism. Since this is a rectangular prism, we can put in length times width for the area of the base, keep our height. They gave me the volume. The volume is 91,000 cubic centimeters, so I'm going to put 91,000 right in for my volume. My length is 35, my width is 65, and I still have my height left over. So I can multiply 35 by 65. 91,000 is equal to 35 times 65. Maybe that's a tough one to do in your head. You can break out your calculator. It will do the work for you. So if I multiply 35 by 65, that will give me 2,275H. I'm going to divide by 2,275 on both sides of the equation. To get h. Now h is a height, so it's going to be measured in a unit that matches length and width. So h is going to be measured in centimeters, and I have to take 91,000, 91,000, and divide by 2,275, and that gives me 40 centimeters for the height. Okay, I think that we have just a couple problems left. A piece of cheese is cut in the shape of a triangular prism. The legs of the right triangle at the base measure 4 inches and 6 inches. Remember, the legs intersect to form a right angle. If the volume of the piece of cheese is 11, 144 feet cubed, find the height of the piece of cheese. So the volume for every single prism can be found using the formula area of the base times height. In this case, we have a triangular prism. 
So for the area of the base, I can put in base times height divided by 2. And then I have my height of the prism. I have an h sub 1 and an h sub 2 here. At this point, I have decisions to make. I can either change the cubic feet to inches or the inches to feet. If I change the inches to feet, it'll put fractions on the right, but maybe that's easier for some of us to deal with the fractions right away. Uh, for others of us, it might be easier to deal with the cubic feet. Really doesn't matter to you. Um, let's say that we keep the 11 over 144. So if I have 11 over 144 cubic feet, then I have to change 4 inches to feet. So I'm going to take that 4 and divide it by 12, which would be 1 third of a foot. I'm going to take the 6 and divide it by 12, which is going to be a half of a foot. So when I put in for my base and my height, I'm going to have a 1 third times a 1 half divided by 2 times this second height, which is the height of the prism. So I have 11 over 144 equals 1 half, sorry, 1 third times 1 half is 1 sixth. And if I put that over 2, that's 1 twelfth h2. And h2 can really just go into my numerator. So I can have h sub 2 being the height there. To solve this, I can cross multiply. So I have 144 times h2. I have 11 times 12, that's 132. I'm going to divide by 144 on both sides. And I can reduce that fraction to 11 twelfths. And that's my height of my prism, and it's measured in feet. If I chose to do this problem in inches, I would have come out with 11 inches and I would have converted here to start the problem. Last problem. Federal Reserve plans to make gold bricks that are in the shape of a rectangular prism with dimensions of 5 centimeters by 10 centimeters by 32 centimeters. If the density of gold is 19.83 grams per cubic centimeter, find the mass of one gold brick. So this problem, I can tell you right now, when you look at a decimal like this, you should be saying, you know what, I should probably try to use a calculator on this. But let's just start by using a formula we know. We know the volume formula. Volume is equal to area of the base times height. Since we have a rectangular prism, we know the base is a rectangle, so we're going to put in length times width for the area of the base. We're going to keep the height. So for the length width, we're going to have 5, 10, for the height, 32. So I would multiply 5 by 32 first, because when I multiply by 10, I just get to tack that 0 on at the end. So 5 times 30 is 150. 5 times 2 is 10, so we have 160. And then we're going to put a 0 on, so we have 1,600. And my unit with that is centimeters cubed. It says the density of gold is 19.83 grams per cubic centimeter. Back in earth science class, you probably learned density is equal to mass times volume. Now, sorry, not mass times volume. I apologize, that was incorrect. Density is equal to mass divided by volume. I gave you that one backwards because we usually go backwards in geometry class. In geometry class, we write it as a product and we say mass is equal to density times volume. So mass is equal to the density, which is 19.83 grams per cubic centimeter, times the volume, which is 1,600 cubic centimeters. So when I multiply that in my calculator, I will have... 19.83 times 1,600, and I'm going to get 31,728 grams. Thank you.
you for watching today's lesson. Good luck on tonight's homework assignment.